the sun is shining, so what better day to come and learn about uh, Ryerson Engineering. Uh, my name's Jeff Capel, and I'm a Senior Admissions and Liaison Officer for the Engineering Programs at Ryerson. Um, so my team, myself, we're here to answer all the questions that you might have, but we're really here to showcase what the Ryerson Engineering community is all about. So this day is packed um, with different sessions and lots of students so you can get the student perspective on things. Um, one big thing that I want to draw to your attention or that for you to go look up is um, ryerson.ca slash askeng. This is where you can actually get our Ryerson Engineering Admissions Handbook. So it'll go through all of the programs that we offer and talk about admission requirements, ways to get involved, and a lot of the things that we will be covering in today's session. So um, to jump on what Sam asked in the polls, I have a few poll questions myself. Um, so we found out that majority of people are, have already applied, hopefully already have offers of admission. Um, but I also wanna ask where people are joining us from. So I'm gonna launch that poll. Some of us might be in Toronto. I myself right now, I live downtown Toronto. I'm about an eight minute walk from campus. Um, right now I'm in my dining room though, <laughs> so welcome. Um, we might have people who are outside of Toronto but within Ontario, outside of Ontario, um, and even outside of Canada. So uh, very awesome. The, the benefit of having all these Zoom um, opportunities is that we can um, come to different countries and not even leave my, my house. So uh, we'll leave that up for three more seconds and then we'll just see who is joining us. So it looks like kind of a majority kind of in Toronto, kind of outside of Toronto, and then also a few outside of Canada and Ontario. So welcome everyone. Um, we are very, very excited um, for this session. Like I said, we have a lot to cover. Um, I'm gonna go through and give a quick admissions update just about where we are in the process, talk a little bit about the services and, and ways that you can be involved in the Ryerson community. We're gonna jump into uh, different ways that you're gonna be supported as a student through our peer networking program. We've invited one of our multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary teams, the Ryerson Rams Robotics team to speak to you and talk about their design projects and competitions. Then we have REST, which is our uh, Ryerson Engineering Student uh, Society. Uh, they'll talk about how you can get involved in that community throughout your four years. And then at the end, we actually have breakout rooms where you can go into specific programs and get a, it's about a 15 to 20 minute presentation on a specific program uh, from a first year director or students in the program. And you can, it's kind of like an ask me anything. So you can ask them anything, <laughs> but you can really get that student perspective um, from students themselves. So we're really excited to offer that at the end. And of course, we'll be available um, to help you out throughout your session. I mentioned uh, that there are some more engineering admission officers in the back end answering your questions as well. So just to jump into it um, and to give you guys a little bit of a hint, you might want to take notes if you want, um, can or just pay attention because REST will actually be hosting a game show as well around 11 o'clock and we will be giving out some of these engineering um, hoodies. So uh, if you want to win one of those, um, just pay attention to what we're saying, uh, but hopefully this will be a fun session for you and hopefully you'll get a lot of information out of it um, and maybe you'll win a hoodie. <laughs> so we will jump right into it, um, just letting you know um, about the different programs that we do offer. So if you go to the handbook that I um, told you about at ryerson.ca slash askeng, this is where on page four, I believe it is, you'll be able to see the different programs that we do offer at Ryerson. Um, so there's a list of them there, but because most of you or, some, or the majority of you have already applied, um, I also wanna know who, what programs you are interested in. So we're gonna do another poll and then I think you can sit back and relax for a little bit. But what programs are you here to learn about? You wanna to speak to the students, you wanna learn about the teams, you wanna learn about the experience. Um, we're kind of popping all over the place, which is awesome. So we'll let that run for a little bit while wow, people, it's funny to, fun to see all the numbers go up. I know you guys can't see this, but we got lots of interaction, which is great. And it looks like it's kind of stopped. So I'll end the poll and share the results. So it is a mixed bag, which is awesome. Um, and what's great about that, and it kind of shows the diversity um, of our program is that although yes, you're gonna be learning engineering at Ryerson, there's also gonna be a lot of opportunities to really specialize that degree. 
Um, so uh, with that being said, when you apply for those who are interested in applying to Ryerson for future years, just keep in mind that you can apply to more than one program. Um, so with that, um, you can go into, you can apply to aerospace or you might be interested in multiple programs. Um, you could get offers to multiple programs. You would have to choose one at the end of the day, but just keep that in mind that it is an option. For those of you who have already applied um, and you want to, let's say, increase your chances potentially, um, we are still accepting applications for some of our programs for September 2021. Um, what's great about our programs is that there are eight there are nine different entry options, eight of them are degrees, um, but there is an undeclared option as well. So if you're not too, too sure about what you want to go into, undeclared is a great way to get your feet wet, kind of learn a little bit about what's going on and the different programs that are available um, as degree programs. Also keep in mind at the end of this session, um, as an undeclared student, I would encourage you to pick one of the different degree programs um, for one of the rooms to speak to the students and learn a little bit more about um, a specific area of interest. Um, what's great about our program though, is that Ryerson, we do share a common first semester. So if you wanted to go to page 14 of the handbook, that's where you'll see this list of, of courses um, that are available. So what's awesome about our program, like I said is that it's a common first semester so it's not necessarily a common first year first semester is where every student whether you're undeclared whether you're civil whether you're aerospace you're all going to be taking calculus one you're all going to be taking chemistry you're all going to be taking the intro to engineering course and this course is key because you're going to learn more about the different degree programs that we offer. So you learn a little bit about each program. Um, each week we cover a different uh, degree program, which really allows you to um, navigate through the system. So as an undeclared engineer, you will have to declare your major by December 1st, so just before second semester, because you'll note that our second semester, you do have some specific courses that are specific to your degree, because we want you to get involved in your degree right in the first year. Get all those basic courses out of the way so second year is that much more enriched. So as an undeclared student, you would declare your major for second semester. But what's great is also if you come in as, let's say, a biomedical engineer and you take the intro to engineering course and you're like, you know what? I actually really like civil engineering. That's what I want to get into. Well, you also have the option um, to switch into a different program as well after that first semester. Um, keep in mind that typically, as long as you're in good academic standing, um, students have been able to switch. And this has been like in the history of history of history of history of history. Anyone has been able to be able to switch um, into different uh, engineering degree programs. Again, as long as you're in good academic standing, which is pretty much 60% or higher, which is passing your courses, which is a great thing <laughs> to definitely aim for. Now, I know we have um, some audience members who aren't within Ontario, but um, as the majority of students are within Ontario, these are the um, courses that we are looking for uh, to get into the program. So to qualify, we're looking for completion of the OSSD with a minimum 80% or higher in your best six or top six grade 12 URM courses with a minimum of 70 to 75% in each of the five prerequisites. So English for you, advanced functions for you, calculus and vectors for you, physics for you, and chemistry for you. Keep in mind, only meeting the minimum does not guarantee admission. Um, right now, our averages, depending on the program, are ranging in the mid to high 80s. So I would say 84 to an 88, depending on the program. But please that we continue to make offers of admission to Ontario high school students and to students outside of Ontario and outside of Canada. We will make those offers um, up until probably about the middle of May. Every Ontario high school student who's a full-time Ontario high school student will have a decision by um, the middle of May. So we will get those out to you shortly if you haven't received anything already. For those of you who are outside of Ontario or even outside of Canada, um, you can kind of use this as a guideline where we are looking for strong overall results with competitive grades in the prerequisite subjects, which are typically English, math, which includes calculus, physics, and chemistry. So just keep that um, in mind as well. Now, some important dates to keep in mind of if you have received an offer of admission or if you're um, hoping to receive an offer of admission for Ontario high school students, the 
deadline to accept your offer is June the 1st. So you want to make sure you go to the OUAC, um, the Ontario University Application Center, to accept this offer. For people, any students outside of Ontario or outside of Canada, you will you might have a different um, acceptance deadline. So just check your offer of admission, but you will also have to accept on the OUAC, so the Ontario University Application Center. Once you've accepted, you'll also want to start thinking about making your uh, tuition deposit, which is $600, and that's due on June the 8th. Um, we won't start accepting these until May 15th. So you have a little bit of time before those are due, but just start thinking about it because we will want that payment to secure your spot in the program by the 8th. And then for Ontario students specifically, we want you to complete all of your courses by June 30th, and you should monitor your OUAC to ensure that all your final results are submitted by July 12th. Now, July 12th is a common uh, submission deadline uh, for students who are completing other curriculums. You might have a different deadline date. So again, on that offer of admission in the top left-hand corner, that's where you'll see um, your specific uh, submission deadlines and confirmation deadlines. So just keep your eyes on those. So uh, moving along, just talking about also how your grades are important. Um, we do have different scholarships and awards that are available. So you can visit our uh, scholarships and awards website to see what you are eligible for and what you um, require. But for uh, Canadian students who are full-time Ontario high school or full-time Canadian high school students, we do have guaranteed and renewable scholarships that are available. These are scholarships that you do not have to apply for and you are automatically considered for. And if you have an 80% or higher um, in your overall average, we will automatically consider you for a scholarship anywhere between two to $16,000. Um, so you can see here, if let's say you have a 95%, you would be eligible for the $16,000 scholarship. Now they're spread over four years. So you would get $4,000 the first year. If you maintained a specific um, average, you would then get $4,000 each year after that. So um, great opportunity there. And again, you're automatically considered for those if you're a Canadian high school student. For everyone else and even Can Canadian or Ontario students, you'd also want to go to um, our application uh, website, which is Award Spring. So you can see the website on that slide. Award Spring is great because you go and fill out a simple application and it'll actually um, connect you with different scholarships that you're available that are available to you and that you qualify for. So some specific entrance scholarships for engineering um, range from an additional two to ten thousand dollars and literally you go and fill out one sheet you might have to go and fill out some additional information but should not take you very long at all um, but the trick with this is that you do have to apply for some additional scholarships. So whether you're an international student whether you're outside of Ontario in Ontario there are other scholarships available these are three that are specific to engineering, but even filling in the, out that form, you could be connected to some additional scholarships and additional money. So um, some are based on your averages, some are based on financial need. So definitely a great opportunity to go and have a look. Um, again, it should not take very long at all because you've already registered for your Ryerson account. You just have to fill in a few um, additional questions. So just keep that in mind that there is some funding available um, to you. Now, some additional things to keep in mind when you're looking at universities and some ways that Ryerson really prepares you throughout your degree. Um, we're excited because you have a specialized program, whether it's aerospace or civil or computer engineering, but it's important to note as well that we want you to be career ready. So we, all of our programs also have a co-op option. Um, with chemical engineering, it is a mandatory uh, program, uh, you have to do a co-op to get your degree. And with chemical, it does run in the traditional sense where you'll do four month placements throughout your degree, starting after your second year. So you'll do two years of the program, go and work for four months, come back and study for four months and work for four months. For all of the other programs, this is an optional co-op, which will happen after your third year. So you don't need to decide now. That's why you also won't see anything about co-op in your offer of admission. I get a lot of questions about that. Doesn't mean we don't offer it. It means that it's offered after your third year. And because it's optional, you don't have to decide until about the end of your second year. You'll get in contact with your department, start to apply, because then after your third year, you get to go and work, get paid for 12 to 16 months after your third year. And you work, you don't worry about 
uh, school, you build that network, you build your resume, and then you come back for your final year of study. So a great opportunity to build the resume, to make some money, but also to network with industry partners within Toronto, within Ontario, within Canada. So some great opportunities there um, for sure. And actually going back to the scholarship, the deadlines are coming up for a lot of um, scholarships. So April 1st, so you wanna hop on maybe today, just see what's available, fill out that form so that you get your applications in. So just an FYI, FYI there. Now, we also know that the transition from high school to university can be an interesting one, but I love to talk about our first year engineering office because they are there to support you to make sure that you are prepared for your for first year. So this first year engineering office, they specialize in the first year curriculum. We have two academic advisors. We have personal counselors. They run orientation events. They have study halls before every major midterm. This office is literally there for the first year engineering students. They go so far as to pick and register you for all of your first year courses, except the one liberal studies, which you're able to pick yourself. So we really set you up for success. Um, and we do that even starting in the summer. So you'll see here that there's a link in the top right hand corner where you can sign up to be on the mailing list um, for the first year engineering office, where they can tell you about different opportunities that are available throughout the summer and even at the start of your first year. The one thing that I love and we developed, um, it's been happening for a while, but it's really been developed over the last year or two is our engineering boost programs. Now these are free, free programming and it happens within the months of July and August. And it's to help you refresh your skills specifically in math, physics, and programming. I think we're talking about a chemistry, um, but for sure those three, math, physics, and programming, we have um, a mini math course, mini physics course, and mini programming course, just to help prepare you to be successful in that first year. Because we know you're probably going through all your classes now, summer happens. So this is just a refresher to make sure you're ready for those courses that are, are coming up. 